speaker is uh, Professor Ni, nee, who will be talking about smart vibration control of high-speed trains using magnetorheological dampers, both analytical and uh, experimental studies. Professor Ni. Professor Maestri. Okay, and also thanks to the conference organizer uh, to make me okay, have a travel to this beautiful place. Uh, my topic is too technical. I don't think this topic is suitable for presentation in this beautiful place. I should talk more philosophy, some issues. Uh, my title is Smart Vibration Control of High Speed Trains Using MR Dampers. Uh, I will present analytical and uh, full-scale experimental study. Uh, this is a joint project with collaborators uh, from Australia and the US. Uh, I'm Y. Kuni from Hong Kong Polytechnic University, Hong Kong. I will talk about the motivation of the research and the fabrication model of MR dampers and the analytical study uh, how to establish MR secondary suspension system. And then finally, I will complete a full-scale uh, experimental verification. So, so motivation. Uh, actually, uh, hunting vibration. Hunting vibration is also called snaking motion. Okay. So snake motion was observed uh, when the running speed of high-speed chain exceeds a certain value. Sometimes we observe hunting vibration at a running speed 400 km per hour. So the existing passive dampers, uh, including passive secondary system, are incapable of accommodating a wide range of running speed from, for example, 15 km per hour to 500 km per hour. So we try to introduce uh, smart damper system. Okay, so this is the uh, location of dampers. You can see we have dampers uh, connect uh, the superstructure and the bogey at a different uh, directions in horizontal, vertical, and transverse directions. So uh, we would like to incorporate smart dampers here. Uh, actually, we have manufactured uh, different uh, several categories of MR dampers uh, specific for application in high speed rails. Uh, this is a uh, so-called first generation with relative large uh, initial stiffness. And here is a uh, uh, second generation with relative small uh, initial stiffness. And this is a general, this is a third generation. This is a recent uh, product we manufactured uh, with two configurations. The first one is uh, annular flow MR dampers. The second one is uh, radial flow MR dampers. So we manufactured dampers, manufactured dam MR dampers totally uh, fitting with the dimension requirement and the force requirement. So I can show you some uh, parameters. For example, how about the power uh, supply range is a uh, maximum uh, power supply is uh, 12 volt and the corresponding uh, current is about 2 amperes. And uh, uh, for this small dampers, okay, the uh, maximum control force is about 4 kilonewtons at velocity equal to 1 meter per second. Uh, the key issue is how to provide control force at low running speed. Uh, here is an experimental result about the dampers. So uh, we have obtained uh, uh, hysteresis loops for uh, different frequency, different displacement range, and different uh, input voltages. And here is the corresponding uh, mathematical models. We have developed vis viscose plastic models. Okay, so uh, we use these models to uh, formulate the experimental result in terms of measurement models. So you can see uh, here is a comparison between the uh, modern result and the experimental result. 
And here is a response for different voltage input. Okay, so uh, this line is a voltage which changes the voltage input to the dampers and to obtain the corresponding uh, hysteresis loop. So we make sure the mathematical model suitable for uh, description of the MRDAM properties under different uh, current input. As, and also, uh, we have developed the analytical models for the whole uh, high speed train systems, including uh, passive dampers or MR dampers. So, we establish a model based on the high speed train CRH3. So, this is full scale system. Uh, we have established 15 degree freedoms model for train systems. Uh, so, we use the uh, MR damper in the secondary suspension system. Okay, so here uh, we establish a model uh, by using 15 degree freedoms. Uh, we have established the uh, equation of motion for all seven uh, subsystems. So here are the equation for the first three uh, subsystems and here for the letter four uh, subsystems. Uh, we have incorporated all equations in the MATLAB symbol link. So the governing equation of motion can be visualized in the MATLAB or symbol link. So this is a car body, a secondary suspension system. Here is a bogey level and the primary suspension system wheels, a wheel and a rear contact. This is a check. And the input to the high speed chain is generated by uh, measured check irregularities with different running speed because we can measure the check irregularities uh, based on the operating high speed rail system. So we use the real measurement data as an input to the high speed rail operation. It is very similar to the earthquake response analysis. We use a measured ground motion as an input to calculate the seismic response uh, for building or bridges. Uh, we have uh, considered different control strategies, including passive, passive on state, on off control, and uh, negative stiffness. Okay, so we try to incorporate this uh, emulated negative stiffness into uh, MR systems. So here is the result about the MR, uh, it, about the response uh, for the passive uh, suspension system because the existing system, okay, used in the high speed chain is a hydraulic damper. So we first, okay, calculate the response uh, based on the existing hydraulic dampers and then we use the MR dampers uh, in passive on state. Okay, so we uh, apply constant current input to the system. And this is an on-off system. Okay, we only have, this is like uh, the bang-bang ban control. So this is an on-off system. And here is a, a result of the AMR dampers uh, with emulated negative stiffness. Okay, uh, I can provide you a comparison here for different control uh, systems. Okay, so for example, in this case, uh, the final conclusion is that the MR damper with emulated negative stiffness performs best because you can see also uh, the frequency of responses at uh, response level 0 0.1 kilometer per square second is very large corresponding to the negative stiffness case. But for larger vibration level, okay, the frequency of response is uh, significantly small uh, for the negative stiffness case in comparison with other control strategies. Of course, when, you, when we use okay, the, uh, smart control system to reduce the vibration for the uh, superstructure for the primary structure, uh, the vibration at uh, the bogey will be relatively increased because uh, damper forces to car body and to bogey actually are a pair of action and reaction. So when you 
you reduce vibration for one part, okay, the vibration of the second part will be uh, increased. And here's another conclusion, the suspension with on-off control and negative stations enhance damper motion or rather have greater capacity of energy dissipation. So uh, after completion, uh, I need to control my time. Uh, after completing the uh, uh, simulation study for the whole structure, uh, we uh, have done the full-scale experimental verification. So this is very unique opportunity to complete this kind of uh, for, for the test because even you have a lot of money, even you have a full-scale chain, it is impossible to bring the chain into your labs if you don't have a real checks to your labs, right? So we uh, have a very unique opportunity to do the uh, vibration test on a rolling rig. So we incorporate the MR damper between, actually we replace the existing damper, so we remove the, uh, the existing passive dampers and uh, incorporate our MR damper between bogey and the Husby, uh, bogey and the superstructure. So uh, here is the installation of MR dampers. We have installed four MR dampers uh, for each uh, real car. And this is, a, this is a, a control system to correct data. Uh, we have just finished the first phase experiment. Uh, this is a passive on state. We have considered eight running speed levels. And for each level of the running speed, uh, we consider five uh, levels of the current input from zero, zero ampere to two ampere. Uh, so the running speed is a range from 8 km per hour to 350 km per hour. So uh, here we also have used uh, FBG sensors for the uh, monitoring of the dynamic response at uh, the bogey level and the real car level because based on the acceleration we measure from the real car, we can uh, identify the right comfort rating, okay, because right comfort rating is an uh, important criteria to assess the performance uh, of, the, of the hard speed chain. We, we use a sampling rate uh, 1,000 hertz, and uh, we use the FPG sensor because it is uh, immune to the EMI. And this, is, this video shows you the full-scale test, okay, so we generate, we generate uh, the vibration, okay, during the rolling. Rolling means we produce uh, uh, the, the speed in the horizontal, in the, in the longitudinal direction. So, so uh, vibration means we produce the vibration, the vertical direction based on the, uh, in reality, in, based on the measurement date from the a real check so we can input in regularity spectrum into the system to produce a rolling wire vibration. So this is the base idea. Uh, here I provide you some result. I, I still have a few minutes, so I go ahead quickly. Okay, so we have measured the dynamic response at the car bodies, different locations, and as well as bogies. And here is a different case. We use a different running speed and uh, uh, current input. And here is a performance evaluation. We establish as a right comfort rating based on the measured acceleration from the uh, car bodies. And then we can identify the optimal uh, passive, on, passive on input. For example, as the optimal current input is 0 0.4 ampere for running speed 116 km per hour. And when the running speed is increased to 315 km per hour, the, in, the optimal input is 0 0.8 ampere. So this is the result we just obtained based on the uh, on-off control. And we are we will go into the uh, uh, the control uh, 
based on the real-time feedback, so we will incorporate this uh, emulated uh, negative stiffness system into the control for the high speed uh, range. Okay, so I still have one, one, okay, one minute. Okay, so before I, I uh, I, I show you one more slide. Okay, actually, in addition to the vibration control, we are, we were more involved in the application of sensing technology to high speed rail in the past years. So we apply our sensors, including FBG sensor and the piezoelectric sensor uh, for the application in high speed railway, not just for uh, rail checks for infrastructure, for structural system, also for other systems, in, for example, the uh, uh, information system, uh, the control system, and uh, the traction system. Okay, so we can identify uh, the faults in different uh, subsystems of high speed chains. Okay, we find the existing mounting system uh, has false positive diagnosis at uh, 70%. Actually, I read several papers written by Professor Mashley about this uh, false sensing forcing, oh, sorry, the, the sensitive fault, fault problem. So this is a sensitive fault problem because uh, we alarm what's or default of thought for the high speed rail, we, but finally we find this is a problem of sense itself, not it's a problem of the, of the speed, of the high speed chains. So we define based on uh, the data we corrected, we find uh, the false po positive diagnosis rate is about 70% for the existing mounting system, and the correct diagnosis force is about uh, eight. 3%. So I think the application of sensing technology to high-speed railways is very promising if we can have some uh, good sensors technology. Okay, so uh, now I go to my uh, conclusion. Uh, a semi-active MR secondary system uh, has been developed to improve the vibration, especially to improve the ride comfort. Okay, uh, the AMR secondary suspension with emulated negative stiffness performance best based on our study up to date. Okay, thank you for your attention, thank you.